Pat Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. And thank you for being here. 888-900-3393. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, the insanity continues and intensifies. <laughs> Every single day. It just gets more insane, doesn't it? I mean, <sighs> not that that isn't fun, because believe me, it is. <clears throat> uh, we got some tweets here uh, that came in after the show. Uh, Pat had bras negotiator uh, about Coca Cola and their new uh, training to try to get people to be less white. <sighs> okay, but imagine this. Coca-Cola could be less be less white training done by Sean King. <laughs> now that would be woke. That's super woke. <laughs> Sean King, of course, if you don't remember, is the white guy who uh, was the head of an NAACP chapter. <clears throat> and let's not forget, to be less white is to be less certain. And then uh, down here also, believe. <laughs> So don't be certain in your belief, uh huh. you know, but believe, eh, sort of, a little bit. Great point made by Saves84, uh, <laughs> tweeting that to us. That is, it's great. Good catch. Uh, these people are just stupid, <laughs> just but stupid. Uh, also, it's not going to be enough to uh, be a vegan, apparently, anymore, because that's not woke enough. Mm. That's not uh, climate friendly enough. Why not? Uh, because if you're a white vegan, then, I see. you know, uh, obviously that can be a problem. Okay. Fail to account for white supremacy and veganism, <laughs> you get white veganism. We must address the role of white supremacy and the <laughs> oppression it creates, no matter if we are vegan or not. White veganism focuses solely on animal liberation while ignoring <laughs> the context of colonization and imperialism and how mm-hmm. all of this impacts mm-hmm. all living beings and the planet. Now, all white people vegans are white vegans. Our veganism must be intersectional, accessible, <laughs> anti-racist, anti-imperialist, and decolonized. <laughs> I, I don't even know how to have a conversation with people like that. White veganism, that's bad. Okay? I guess. Well, anything white is bad. Anything white. Anything white. I think we learned that yesterday. Vanilla ice cream, saltine crackers. Mm-hmm. Um, Not good. That's, that's bad. Wow. I mean, the racism has just intensified and just switched races. We're, we're not trying to achieve equality. We're trying to achieve uh, uh, a situation, a uh, society where there's no white people or there's white people have nothing to say about anything. White people just have to sit down and shut up. White people have to be the slaves. That's, I guess that's now the goal because... Uh, it's being taught everywhere. And l- look at these idiots, these vegans. <laughs> I mean, where are you getting this stuff? It's so bizarre. If your veganism doesn't address the larger issue of colonialism, then uh, that's just not enough. <laughs> you might as well be eating meat at that point. Mm-hmm. All right? Okay. It's so... Wow. It's like they're finding new excuses to be racist. Mm-hmm. That's all this is. That's all this is, is reverse, I hate that, reverse racism. Mm -hmm. That's what we're dealing with. To me, racism is racism. Yes. Uh, There is no reverse racism. They're just being racist against white people now. But it's hip. But it's fine. It's cool. If you're saying that, then you're woke. If you're saying stuff like... Yeah. It's not enough to be a vegan. You got to be an anti-racist and anti-colonialist. I have to be an anti-colonialist? I was in here because I didn't like meat. Am I in the wrong meeting? So if I don't fight against, like, uh, British Columbia (laughs) in Canada, then I'm not a a good vegan because that's colonialism right there. I love that. Uh, uh, White vegans? What was the first, the very first clip, the the lady, what did she say? They make it all about uh, animal liberation. Fail to account for white supremacy and veganism, oh, okay. you get white veganism. Okay. We must address the role of white supremacy and the oppression it creates no matter if we are vegan or not. White veganism focuses solely on animal there. liberation while ignoring right. the context of colonization and imperialism. Yeah. Would you now- shut up? The context of colonization and imperialism. She's the gun guy. 
She's the uh, 3D gun guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. What am I resisting? Uh, colonization and imperialism. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I swear. The world... We're out of words, man. Oh, yeah. We're, we're, we've, we've gone through the dictionary, the thesaurus. We're done. Yeah. I mean, there's no more words. Who, you know, in whose conception, under what paradigm? Wow, good question. You know, I'm you just know. resisting. What am I resisting? What am I resisting? I don't know. I don't the collectivization know. of manufacture? Mm, the, the institutionalization, institutionalization of the human, human psyche? psyche? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I can tell you one thing. Well, okay. This is a symbol of reversibility. They can never eradicate the gun from the earth. <laughs> <laughs> or white veganism. Right. <laughs> I think the greatest thing in that clip is... At the end, when you can hear Glenn going, <laughs> like, yeah, what do you say to what that? What do I say now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what he said. So, what do I say in <laughs> response? Oh, mercy! <laughs> My response, I think, would have been, "Well, I can't argue with that. I, I just can't." Because, um, <laughs> frankly, I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> uh, all right, triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. We're also changing our language now at the border, of course. Oh, good. There's no illegal aliens. We know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, no human can be illegal. Uh, and I guess nobody can be illegally here in this country. They are opening the first migrant facility for children. Huh. A migrant facility for mm-hmm. children. Okay. Yeah, they just built a series of migrant facilities. For children. Oh, it's like a shelter. Yeah, it's almost like a, I don't know, a cage, almost like a... Whoa. Yeah, like you're putting kids in cages again, <laughs> as <laughs> Biden did when he was with the Obama administration, Wow. and then he complained about it the whole time during Trump, uh-huh. and now he's doing it again. Boy, they love putting bars on the windows, don't they? Why would you bar those windows? What are you doing with these children? Why have you separated them from their families? <sighs> yeah, everyone is pointing out the, the overnight <clears throat> language change among the mainstream media. I it's mean, that's... no longer kids in cages. It's uh, detention. What was it? It's uh, a migrant, migrant facility migrant for fa- children. <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> it's really hard to believe. If you didn't see it every single day, all day, then you probably wouldn't believe it, but... We do see it every single day. It's true. Day. We are the the frog boiling in the water. Mm-hmm. And it's just the heat gets turned up every day. Just, and here we are. What they're doing at the border is creating a, another border crisis. And uh, there are some people that are yelling and screaming for him to stop. Uh, got this young mayor of Del Rio, Texas, who is begging the administration to stop dumping illegal aliens in his community. Mm. Mr. President, my name is Bruno Lozano, mayor of the city of Del Rio, Texas, and I am pleading and requesting with you to please put a halt to any measures regarding the release of immigrants awaiting court dates into the city of Del Rio and surrounding areas. I thought you'd love that. We do not have the resources available to house and accommodate these migrants within our community. By the way, this guy's a Democrat. I have no choice Mm -hmm. but to use the extreme measure under the emergency declaration as the mayor of the city of Del Rio, Texas, (laughs) Mm -hmm. to refuse the entry of migrants awaiting court dates into the city of Del Rio. If you do send these individuals into our community, Mm -hmm. we will be forced to make a decision to leave them without resources under these dire circumstances. Oh, you animal. I'm asking to please stop. Please make another plan for this federal issue. If you're going to allow these Mm. individuals into our community, I respectfully ask that you provide the means and the supplies necessary to accommodate them safely (laughs) under these extreme circumstances. Due to the crisis, we cannot provide these supplies. What? We are asking for supplies, water, and prioritization of equal distribution of electrical power in our community. Evil people. AEP has given us an update that ERCOT has given the authorization to prioritize Eagle Pass and Del Rio, Texas. We do not have a timestamp as to when we'll be getting power again, and we cannot be guaranteed that it will be consistent. We have been outsourcing dialysis treatments for our in-need persons in our community. Wow. We have had to relocate the elderly who are in need of power for for oxygen tanks. Listen to this. They don't have power. They're having to outsource people to other places just so they can get dialysis treatment. And meanwhile, the federal government is dumping hundreds of people who have nowhere to go, who have no means of their own support, who are counting on us for their support into the city under these circumstances. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a madhouse, right? It's a madhouse! 
It's it's madness. Seriously, it would be better if apes had taken over. <laughs> I think apes would make better decisions than the Biden administration is making. Is it too late to take them up on that offer? The apes? Yeah. Like, when does that expire? <laughs> I'm like, not if, sure. Can we just, like, wave a flag? I'm not sure. We'll have All to right. look into that, though. We're gonna, I'm going to circle back to you circle. on that one. Let me like, circle back. Not a semicircle. No, I'm, this is going to be a full circle. Full, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's see what else this poor mayor had to say. We are completely and utterly spread thin with resources for our own community. Hmm. With the extreme weather conditions and icy roads, we are limited with what we can bring into our community. I'm in constant communication with other border mayors who have immediate concerns regarding the migrant population in our communities. Our nonprofits, our churches are running thin with resources to provide to our very own citizens. Additionally, we have been burdened with the inadequate communication systems throughout the entire area, which has impacted our ability to respond and coordinate limited resources and distribution. This administration has taken a firm stance on COVID-19 protections for Americans. I am asking you to ensure the health and safety of all of our taxpaying citizens along the border <laughs> are treated with the same urgent consideration. Releasing the migrant population without any COVID-19 protection protocols is undermining your commitment to the stance against what COVID-19. A whiner. Mm-hmm. Know, Local resources right? have been utilizing <laughs> municipal buildings to not only house the needs what of displaced citizens mean? during the inclement weather, but to also facilitate it warmed the vaccinations up. of residents. I cannot mix the migrant population with Del Rio residents yeah. that are extremely vulnerable and Why? have been displaced due to the extreme weather that has hater. not improved. What a hater this Who did guy you is. Vote for? We may be a small town that is off of your radar, uh-huh. but we have a community of 50,000 people who need your attention. Wow. We are requesting that you please listen and that you please come through. Huh. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Good luck with that, Bruno. Uh, what is Bruno's background? Where did he come from? Oh, he's, he's really young to be mayor of. Yeah, a, he's definitely he's young. Thirty-five. Yeah, and and, and his uh, bio, he says he was born in the early '80s. I mean, can we hmm. can we not get a, an exact date <laughs> on that? I mean, he well, wasn't the born 80s, in the '80s. I mean, the like, records are sketchy for that right. Time like, period. like I can understand if he was born in the 1580s. <laughs> yeah, so Bruno was born in the early 1580s. Anyway, born in the early 1980s. Uh, his background. Let's see. Uh, the page is closed. Of course, I do remember seeing that he was a flight attendant at one point. No. Oh. So that's in nice. his background. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I wonder if he's the only former flight attendant to ever become mayor of a of an American city. That's a great trivia question. Yeah, isn't it? I'll circle back to you on that. Well, again. Uh, again. Yeah. Full are circle. you Are you writing notes over there? Like, yeah. Yeah. I got a note in my head. A couple of them. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right. Let me tell you about uh, real estate agents I trust. Because if you're trying to sell your home, you want to sell it quickly so that you get the most amount of money. And there's so many things to decide when you're selling your house uh do we repaint to make it more attractive to fit the style that's going on right now like we bought our house uh in 2012 when we moved here uh this everything's changed since then people want a completely different look in their house than than when we moved in and so you need a realtor who can advise you on all all these things and whether or not you're going to get your money out of whatever it is you do to update your house you want somebody with a great track record. You want somebody with a great marketing plan. And these are the people to turn to. Plus, they're all fans of the show, so you're going to have plenty in common with them. Whether you're buying or selling or doing both because you're relocating, Real Estate Agents I Trust is where you should go. The name says it all. Real Estate Agents I Trust.com. <laughs> All right, triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. So uh, things returning to normal in Texas, as we mentioned uh, yesterday, because it was like I don't know seventy three, seventy four degrees on Sunday. It was nice yesterday. It's supposed to be nice again today. So nice. Oh. Uh, but apparently Del Rio, Texas can't handle the influx of just a couple of illegal aliens that they have to take care of now. If you're to listen to the whining right. of their mayor. What do you <laughs> need? Come on. I mean. This is the richest nation on you. earth. Thank you, Pat, for saying Haven't that. you heard? It is the wealthiest nation in the history of the world. Just take care of them. 
Right. I don't make these hostage <laughs> videos. I know that's what it sounded like. It sounds like you're reading it, the script. Like, uh, it, it, it Mr. Looks, President, please send help. Uh, somebody had a sword to his neck. Is what it sounded like. Uh, I mean, Jeez. either you love every human being or you don't, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Uh, and Merrick Garland, oh. who was uh, nominated at one point to be <laughs> a Supreme Court justice, that was funny. Has uh, now been nominated to be the Attorney General of the United States, and here he is talking about illegal immigration. Oh, wow. Talk a little bit more about the law enforcement challenges at the border, which I know a number of other members have brought up with you. Just a, a fundamental question. Do you believe that illegal entry at America's border should remain a crime? Well, I haven't thought about uh, that question. Pause it for a second. Uh, uh, and, and what a tough question that is. Right. Huh. Mm, the guy's wow. going to be the attorney to, general. I'm going to have to noodle that one out. Mm. Is illegal immigration a crime? Hmm. What was the name of it again? I f- illegal immigration? Oh, I'm going to have to. I haven't thought about that. Write that one down too. As long as you're <laughs> taking notes. All right. Let's let's hear his answer because I'm okay. sure it's powerful. Well, I haven't thought about uh, that question. Uh, uh, I just uh, haven't thought about that question. I, 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 think, I think you uh, mentioned you know, that. The, the president. Have has, you thought about uh, the question though? Made clear you, that we are mm. a country of uh, with the borders and with the concern about national security. <laughs> um, I don't know of a proposal Pause. to. Uh, that's a really like unique concern. We are a country with borders. And that's really unusual. I'm glad he mentioned that. I'm glad he brought that up. <laughs> we are. We're a country with borders. You're right about that. Uh, you that, nailed it, Merrick. I mean, that is actually unusual <laughs> at this point <laughs> that we would have borders. Uh, Just ask the mayor of uh, Del Rio, Texas. Yeah. Uh, let's see him wiggle it out, wiggle out of this uh, a little bit more. Uh, made clear that we are a country uh, of uh, 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 with uh, the borders uh, and uh, with borders the concern area. about national security. Uh, so, yeah, um, I don't right. know of a proposal to uh, decriminalize but still make it uh, unlawful to enter. I just don't know the answer to that question. I haven't thought about it. Um, <laughs> it will you continue to prosecute un- unlawful border crossings? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Well, uh, this is again uh, an, uh, a question again, of no, allocation uh, of resources. Um, um, uh, we will, uh, 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 the department uh, uh, will uh, 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 prevent uh, unlawful uh, um, uh, crossing. Um, uh, um, um, I don't uh, know. I, uh, no, I, I have to admit, I just don't understand, uh, know exactly um, what the conditions are and how um, this is uh, uh, done. Uh, I think if um, 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 I don't know what the current um, program even is with uh, respect uh, to this. <laughs> Um, if um, you send so, back them. Uh, I, I, I assume that the answer would be yes, but I you don't. Assume. I don't know what the. Okay, he, so he's he, he's not sure because he hasn't thought about it. He's trying to be the Attorney General of the United States of America, and he's never thought about the question of whether or not illegal aliens are uh, breaking the law. Okay, but it's not like he's trying to get the position of uh, of uh, someone uh, who, like a law uh, enforcement, the principal legal officer who represents a country or state in legal proceedings and gives mm-hmm. legal advice to the government. Hmm. It's not like that's the job he's going for here. Um, uh, 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 um, um, like, uh, you get less us um, out of butthead, <laughs> quite honestly. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's literally, that was like, what was that, 80 seconds? And half of the things the man uttered was the word, uh. Well, also, um. And, um. Yeah. I don't want to sell him short, Merrick Garland. And this was the guy that liberals were like, oh, he's going to be such a great jurist on the Supreme Court. My goodness. I guess Mitch McConnell actually did us a favor Keeping this guy out of the Supreme Court, but now, now, now he's going to be the Attorney General. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, or, uh, um, I haven't um, thought about that. Uh, um, uh, uh, um, <laughs> mm, he doesn't uh, even know. What do you mean you don't know the current process? You arrest them, mm-hmm. they go to court in theory, then they're found guilty, and you send back them. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's the process, Merrick. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should put my name in the hat for Attorney General. Mm. It seems like I can have. I've got more credentials than this guy. 
I mean, uh, maybe you should learn something from Felipe Calderon oh, from okay. years ago. I strongly disagree mm -hmm. yeah. with the recently adopted law, law in Arizona. In Arizona. It is a law. Yay! It's it is a law. It's a law. Here's a law. Uh, okay. So he strongly disagrees, but when he's questioned about what to do about it okay in his country by wolf blitzer what would you what do you do in mexico let i mean give us an idea of what <laughs> brilliant things you do of course if somebody sneaks in from nicaragua or some other country in central mm -hmm. america through the southern border of mexico they wind up in mexico they can go get a job they no, can no. work no. if no. somebody do that yeah. without right. permissions we without send permissions. Ba we send back them send back them. they send back them if they do that without permissions we sent back them to Manawandia. Thank you. I was. I'm glad you didn't let that go because Wolf mm -hmm. specifically asked mm -hmm. if they come from that country. Right. What are you gonna do with them? We sent back them to Manawandia Rawa. So <laughs> we should follow uh, Felipe's lead uh, and do that here. We send back them um, when they, you know, come into our country without permissions. Uh, Am I right or, mm. or am I right? Or am I right? Um, or, or am I right? Mm. No, we're the only country on earth that Seriously. can't do that. We're the only ones. We're the only ones who are expected to just allow it. Just anybody who wants to sneak in can. And then we have to take care of them. We have to make sure that they have a good yeah. life yeah. outside the shadows. We never make them feel nervous. They don't have to look over their shoulder anymore. Nope, you broke our law. You came in. We're, we love that. We love it when people do that. <laughs> and we do. Uh, if you're to listen to Joe Biden and this administration, yeah. we do love it. Yeah, you know where they love it? They love it up in Washington, D.C., where they think that there's no effect whatsoever on this country. But what ends up happening, you have mayors of your own party making video pleas, help us. Do you mm -hmm. not see what's happening to our community because of right. your stupid anti-American policies? We can't even take care of our own citizens. And now you're dumping all kinds of people who are not citizens into the equation, and we can't handle it. <sighs> But in D.C., as you mentioned, I mean, they they don't understand because they don't need a fortified border in Washington, D.C. Wait, what? You know, they don't have to protect themselves from anybody sneaking across any sort of lines or boundaries. They just let everybody do whatever they want. We've got some examples of that. Huh? Yeah, we... Uh, look at that. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. No, wait like, now. Yeah, like, there's a... A fence. Okay, you're taking these pictures out of context, sir. <laughs> there's a there's another shot of the fence around the Capitol. Barbed wire fencing around your U.S. Capitol. Look at this fencing. I mean, they've really they've really ex expanded it. Wait, can can I not cross through and then have them take care of me? So they've absolutely closed off it's, sections right. of downtown D.C. Fencing, concrete barriers, barbed wire, razor wire fences, wow. armed guards. I uh, mean, this looks worse than what they did after 9-11. Uh, oh, yeah. By a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, this here is, uh, and remember, Jeez. they left it up. They did it on January 6th, right? And then there was rumors they were going to leave it up through the impeachment trial, make sure there was no funny business from Trump supporters. You know, mm -hmm. uh, The Senate's done. The House and the Senate are both done with their impeachment part due yeah. work. Yeah. So let's go. When do you, okay, so now what's the uh, what's your date on when they're going to take the barriers? Uh, at down? the end of fall, maybe sometime at the end of fall. Actually, they're not taking down the barriers, but they might send the National Guard back home uh, at the end of fall. You've heard that? Yeah. What? Yeah, maybe fall. They're going to be there. Maybe fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe when the Biden administration is done. You know, maybe. four years from now. That's when they'll finally... Yeah, maybe. January 20th, 2025. That's when you start seeing the concrete barriers and stuff. What a nightmare. But the barriers and the, tr and the troops, uh, that all screams unity, doesn't it? <laughs> I thought the... It screams I unity. I got that off the of the of razor lungs. wire. That's where <laughs> yeah. I was hearing unity. Man, I feel so close to them with that razor wire atop the fencing. <laughs> I, I, it's incredible. This is... It's really incredible. Uh, 888 Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, just to give you something even more frightening. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Ami Horowitz. He just did another one of those 
uh, segments where he, he goes to a college campus and asks the kids certain questions. He was trying to get them to sign a petition, I believe, right? This was a, a petition to, to repeal the United States Constitution. <laughs> oh, he's so good. <laughs> and he goes to the campus of Yale. Oh. Okay, one of the uh, best League. universities in the world, yeah, well, right? League, so you got to believe that these are smart kids, and they're going to see through this nonsense. Oh, okay. Do you feel the Constitution has any relevance to you at all? I mean, when you put it like that... To answer that question, no. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm Ami Horowitz, and I'm here on the campus of Yale University, uh -huh. where the students are our future thought leaders. The U.S. Constitution <laughs> is the guarantor of our rights and the foundation of our freedoms. Or is it? <laughs> Ami on the loose. I have a petition to repeal the Constitution of the United States. So what I'm calling for is to repeal the Constitution, to repeal the Constitution of the United States. Just get rid of it in its entirety. Just get rid thing. of it. The whole thing. Uh, it's an interesting uh, proposition for sure. Very in support of I, your energy and your mission. Agree. I mean, that sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds that's cool. cool. That's neat. That's, that's awesome. neat. I that's awesome. Your efforts. And I wish you good luck. It was oh created in gosh. a racist white supremacist context. You agree that it's kind of a, a racist document at this it point? Is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I just feel like it's a it's a white supremacist document. Oh, for sure, yeah. For sure. Oh, Do you feel oh, like yeah, it's a franchise? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. I think this whole country's got to go. No, I'm this whole country's got to go. go. This is this is it's a it's a really it's a I'm white with supremacist you. document. Oh no, I my. definitely agree. Yeah, I'm a, yeah. Very much gosh. drafted in white supremacy and very much uh, drafted in everything white supremacy. That you said, sure. I agree with. Uh, I say burn it down and then idiots. You know, construct race in the ashes. Yeah, yeah, we're at that point. Don't forget to vote. Do you feel the Constitution has any relevance to you at all? I mean, when you put it like that, mm -hmm. yeah. to answer that question, no. Do you think mm -hmm. the Constitution has any relevance to you in your life? Anything in it? Um, I mean, I think it's, I, I don't know, I don't know. There's no freedoms, so to speak. There's no, no freedoms. No freedoms. Yes. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. Uh, this guy did not sign my petition. <laughs> He's a huge Thank fan. Show, uh, sure, I know. Thank you. 65% wow. of everyone I spoke with signed my petition Unreal. to get rid of the Constitution of the United States of America. Oh, oh. Okay, very Chilling. Much. I appreciate it. Chilling. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Great, thank you. All yeah. these thank people you. signing Why not? away their freedom. Why not is his question. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know it's, it's kind of important. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. This woman was sitting around all day trying to get people to sign up to vote. She didn't get a single person. Considering well, what we just good. witnessed, yeah. I was thankful. Th no kidding. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. They wouldn't sign up to vote, but they would sign a petition to repeal the Constitution of the United States. <laughs> this has been a sobering half hour on the Pat Gray Unleashed program. That's chilling. That is... Uh, it shows, though, the indoctrination. It shows what the education process is doing for these kids. Ivy League school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are the best and the brightest among us. So, Future thought leaders uh, is how he described it. Does that mean in the future they might actually have a thought? <laughs> because that was dreadfully depressing. Yeah. 65. And see, that's the thing. You, you could... You could uh, convince yourself that, oh, you know what? I bet he just got the few people mm -hmm. that said that. But at the end, he gives you the actual statistic. 65% of the people he talked to. And I appreciate that. Signed it. Because he could have absolutely yeah, talked to 500 people and then put the 10 up there. Right. That, that, that yes. went along with it. The but, 10 idiots. But 65% <clears throat> of those kids believe the Constitution of the United States should be repealed. That it's a racist document. Uh, if he got their address, right too, name. maybe he could mail them a pocket constitution Yeah. later. Hey, maybe you should take a look at this. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Here's what you, you wanted be, to get rid of, dummies. You might be surprised at the freedom <laughs> you have as a result of it. 888-900-3393. More Pat Gray Unleashed coming up. Got some tweets here. Comrade Snoobage tweets. Because of the white veganism and how bad that is? Yeah. Well, what about fasting? Is there white supremacy in fasting? Well, yeah, there's white supremacy in everything. Wait, they want you... 
I don't know. That, they want you to starve to death, so they would probably. So if you're that, white, that might be okay. They might go for yeah. that. Yeah. If your fasting lasts the rest of your life, then it's okay. <laughs> uh-huh. Carl Smith uh, tweets: Stand up against white veganism. Eat a steak. Yeah. I'm all about that. Uh, tip over and um, capsize. capsize. Imagine if instead of um, he said like. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's like, you know, like, oh. well, then he'd be Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Oh, yeah. So, oh, my goodness. Now I'm scared. Right? Imagining her as the <clears throat> AG. Oh, well, that, I wouldn't oh. put that past the Biden administration, would you? <laughs> I could see them making her uh, a really important part of the cabinet. I could, I could see it happening. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Well, this country, uh, as we've learned over the last half hour certainly today and <laughs> in the last many years this country is so bad yeah so evil yeah. so racist oh that it's just chasing people good people out of it and uh stevie wonder <laughs> is on oprah and uh oh. here's what he revealed to oprah Uh-oh. about uh, this guy i promise you if you do the right thing i'll give you the song mm. i'll give it to you you give Get me the song it. have it because I want to see this nation smile again. Oh, um, oh that's nice. And I want to see it before I leave to travel to move to Ghana. Before you move and travel and move. Because I'm going to do that. You're going to move permanently to Ghana? I am. You are? Mm. Why? Because I, I, I don't want to see my <clears throat> mm-hmm. children's children's children Children. have to say, oh, please like me. Please, please respect me. Great, great. Yeah. Please know that I'm important. Please yeah. value me. Right. You know, he's so right. I mean, certainly the United States of America can't compete with the freedom and inclusion of Ghana. Right. Right? Am I right? I mean, there's no ethnic conflict in Ghana other than the ethnic conflicts that have been going on for over 400 years there. But other than that, there's no ethnic conflict Hmm. in in Ghana. But that's why in Ghana... Stevie Wonder's children's 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 children will be completely worry-free. And so I think that's a really good move for him. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. I can't take it. That's good. I can't take it. They act They act like, I mean, does this country have a, some problems? Of course. It's not perfect. Nothing on this earth right now is perfect. Nobody is perfect. No country is perfect. No item is perfect. Uh... But this is this is a better place even right now than anywhere else on this planet. And it's always been that way. You go to Ghana. I think that's great. Uh I I hope you have a great time in Ghana. That's fantastic. I I'm sure your lifestyle there will be far superior to what you can find in the USA. Here's just a quick uh, news search uh you look up uh, what's going on in Ghana. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. Uh, well, uh, Ghana, uh, is it perfection? Is it like? Yeah, Ghana's perfect. Yeah. Oh, okay, that was one headline. Uh, Ghana <laughs> still perfect. Okay. <laughs> Ghana Chamber of Commerce says, "Yep, come on and visit us because we're still perfect." Wow. wow. No culprits of electoral violence won't be spared. Hmm. So we get the culprits get the of electoral, electoral violence. violence won't be spared. All right. That kind of sounds hmm. that's kind of close to home. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, five arrested in connection with chieftaincy dispute. Yeah. Yeah. The chieftaincy disputes. Yeah, I, she- I mean, we have so many more chieftaincy disputes in this country, though, than they do in Ghana. I mean, that's going to be really nice for him to to only have a few chief t- chieftaincy uh, disputes um, to deal see. with. Yeah, they're dealing with um, anti-gay rage. Oh no! Happening in Ghana, but okay. again, perfect. But perfect. But perfect. I mean, it's so perfect. It's even perfecter than you can possibly imagine. Uh, <laughs> they, that's the impression, I guess, in the minds of these leftists. That everywhere else you go, there's going to be no racism whatsoever. I mean, this is the most diverse country in the history of the world, and we get along pretty damn good considering considering all that is going on we have meshed all of our lifestyles and our cultures and jammed them all together in one place and it works and we're prosperous too right all at the same time amazing 
And and uh, did he do any research? Did he even Google Ghana I don't, before I don't know. he said, "Yeah, I'm moving. I don't want to see. I don't know what it is. He doesn't want to see. But what is it? Grand grandkids or something? His children's children's children. Uh, I don't know. They're going to have some kind of problem. Oh, they're not going to have to actually play it again because it was it was fascinating what he said. Uh, uh-huh. He doesn't want his children's children's children to. I don't know what. Let's see it. Yeah, we get a song, uh, though. I promise you, if you do the right thing... If you do the right thing. I'll give you the song. Oh, okay. I'll give it to you. Give it to you. Give it to you. can have it. You can ah. have it. Because I want to see this nation smile again. No, you're not going to. Oh. Huh? And I want to see it before I leave to travel to move to Ghana. Uh-huh. Because I'm going to do that. You want to okay. move permanently to Ghana? Yes. Yeah, Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah, Why? Because I, I, I don't want to see my... <clears throat> Your children, children's children, children's children, children have to say, oh, please like me. Please, oh, please, please like me. respect me. What? Please, please respect me. Please like me. Please value me. Got to be kidding me. It, it, you suppose Stevie Wonder's kids have it really bad uh, and this kid's children have it really bad? Yeah, his great grandkids. Yeah. yeah. And Wait, uh, your Stevie Wonder's children or grandchildren? Uh, we don't have any respect for you. We don't like you. I, I wonder how often that happens. So, but they're not going to get the song for free, right? Well, if they do the right thing, they'll get the song. Well, what's for the free. right thing? He'll give it to you. That's com- now I'm confused. <laughs> I wish you they know, knew. Daniel did a great job of editing that answer and trying to make Stevie Wonder seem coherent. But even the Oprah people themselves had to interrupt his rambling answer there as they made their <laughs> promo. Like if you mm-hmm. see the full video, the punch logo comes up. And Stevie Wonder is still blah blah. I'll give it to you. Blah blah. Smile blah. Children, children of Ghana. Um, er, like. Mm-hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. so 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 we actually made that answer seem much more coherent than it actually was. And you're welcome, Stevie. You're welcome. Uh, all right. Let me take a minute to tell you about Texas Superfood, a new sponsor to the show. Do you know the to- uh, what the top two things people say they notice? When they start using Texas Superfood, mm. they notice they have more energy and they get better sleep. Mm. And of course, those things go hand in hand, actually. Texas Superfood gives you the power of nutritionally dense fruits and vegetables. It's the power of enzymes and probiotics in action. And it's great for me because I don't get the vegetables. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> I, just, I don't eat them. Uh, you've heard about the enzymes and the probiotics. And I don't know what they are either, but I know that they're important to living a healthy life. Somehow they fit into making your body healthier. Texas Superfood is organic, vine-ripened, antioxidant-rich, raw natural fruits and vegetables that make maintaining proper nutrition incredibly easy. They use only the finest quality ingredients so that they can give you the best all-natural product possible. Each ingredient has been certified and selected to give you optimal nutritional intake and their grab and go packaging with it. You're going to, you're going to be able to guarantee that your Texas superfood will be there when you need it. All the fruits and vegetables used are grown organically from locally sourced farms, highest quality nutritional supplement available on the market. You're going to love it. Just go to texassuperfood.com. Check them out today, especially if you're like me and you don't get a lot of vegetables in your diet or fruits for that matter. That's TexasSuperfood.com. At Gray Unleashed. You know what we should do, in fact, is encourage all of these left-wing morons. You know what? Hmm. Ghana. Uh, is practically perfect oh, in yes? every way. Tell me on it. Yeah, it's oh, it's beautiful. You know, this time of year. Yeah, when the chieftaincy disputes just start to subside ever so slightly, <laughs> so you have less blood flowing in the streets. It's it's really really nice. You know, really nice. I bet the uh, they have something that <laughs> Texas didn't have last week. You know, running water, yeah, electricity. Yeah, right. I mean, I bet it wasn't any frozen precipitation, nothing rarely, like that. Rarely, rarely does it get down to five below in I mean, Ghana. Right now, in the in, in the in the the capital of Ghana, which I know that you know what it is. <clears throat> yeah, it's yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah the mm-hmm. capital city. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. in the capital city of um, Accra. Anyhow, it's ninety degrees right now. 
90. 90 with an overnight low of 77. Oh. Oh, wow. Partly cloudy skies. Oh, it's probably summer though in Ghana, right? It's probably summer night. I don't right know now. when it. It's warmer than here. Uh, yes, it is warmer than. It's not cold. snowing. Considerably warmer than here. Yeah. Uh, I wonder what the population of Accra, Ghana, is. Let's find out, shall we? Yeah, I bet you can get a, a great peak. music studio set up there too. There, Steamy. I'm sure you could. I'm sure, it's just uh, 4.2 million people live there. Wow. Uh, we should know the capital city of Ghana. Yeah. Why I have I never like. heard that word? I don't know. Boy, I was publicly educated. There you go. You just answered your own question. Cobb County, Georgia. Uh-huh. That's the problem. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. So this is kind of terrifying. Since we, you know, we might as well finish off the uh, the hour with even more terrifying oh, information no. for you. Oh no! History teacher discussing oh. major events with uh, Gen Z students. Oh no! Yeah, this will make your hair stand up on end. Helen Keller is the Nazi guy. No, <laughs> oh, what Nazi guy? Helen. I don't know. He like Keller. He's like a terrorist. <laughs> Pause Helen it for Keller a second. Is a Nazi terror. Uh, okay. Okay. This is not Helen. a setup. Helen. Yeah. Keller. Yeah. Is the Nazi guy. I, is it just me, or should you not at least know that it's not a Nazi guy? <laughs> right. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. Should you at least know that? <laughs> Come this, on. And this teacher, I think that these kids were just <laughs> illustrating their stupidity. <laughs> So much. Unreal. He's got his phone on his desk, and so you see his face, mm-hmm. uh, half of it, since it's, you know, covered with mask. a mask. But he's taking a big risk doing this. Uh, <laughs> he's probably a substitute teacher who's like, look, I'm quitting this gig in five minutes. I'm never coming back. So record. I guarantee that's what this was. But anyway, listen to the. Start the at the sadness. beginning again, because this, um, this is amazing. It's amazing. Helen Keller is the Nazi guy. <laughs> no. Are, what Nazi guy? I don't know. He like he's like a terrorist. <laughs> Helen Keller is a Nazi terrorist that is a male. Is that what you're telling me right now? Yeah. Yeah. Right? No. Are you thinking of Hitler? Who's Hitler? Is Hitler the Who's Hitler? He's Who's the Hitler? Nazi guy. Helen Keller was the blind and deaf person who was fake. She didn't exist, but everyone believes she was deaf and blind. What? She was didn't fake? Exist. Yeah, she was deaf and blind. What Pearl Harbor was, if I say Pearl Harbor? Is that a bridge? Is that a bridge? Do you know what D-Day is? <laughs> it's a D-Day. A person? A rapper? <laughs> but you're, are you being... Ay, ay, ay. Wow. Now, let's revisit something from about an hour ago <laughs> on the program. Wow. Is the offer a standing offer from the apes to take over our planet? <laughs> I yes hope so. Or no. Because it could not be worse than what we're dealing with right now. I think the apes run it better. I you, think they do. T- to quote a phrase from <laughs> Ami Horowitz, those are our future thought leaders. <laughs> help us, uh, Lord. Terrifying doesn't doesn't do justice to what that was. I mean, these again, yeah, the future leaders of our nation. Helen Keller is that Nazi guy, yeah. the terrorist. Yeah. No, are you the thinking di- of Are you thinking of Hitler? Who's Hitler? <laughs> like, never heard the the name and before. The, and then the other kid jumps in, thinking he's all smart. Yeah, Helen Keller. They, that's somebody they said existed, but didn't really. <laughs> and he didn't believe she was blind or something. Yeah, I just wasn't don't, that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. And then uh, but now D Day actually is a good rapper name in retrospect. Uh-huh. I don't want to dishonor what happened there, but like somebody's <laughs> going to grab that now after seeing that video. Mm-hmm. For sure. Faux <laughs> shizzle. D-Day will be a rapper's name within the year. When I say Pearl Harbor, is that a bridge? Uh, it's No, a, Pumpkin, it's not. It's, it's a not. freaking it's, harbor. It's not a bridge, Budden. It's not. So Good uh, try, though. So those kids <laughs> go on to get accepted at an Ivy League school. Oh, yeah, Yale. And then they're like, the ones who are telling you, yeah, we got to repeal this yeah. Constitution thing. It sucks. It doesn't provide you with any freedoms. That's the problem with it. Now, I want Ami Horowitz to go to that classroom and ask them, hey, does anybody here know what the Constitution is? Yeah. <sighs> I think you'd be hard-pressed to find an answer. Help us. I really do. I, how, many, how many of these Gen Z kids know what the constitution is have they ever studied it in school if you're not if you don't study it and then nobody says anything to you at home well that's how you're going to wind up you're not going to know about it you're not going to know the constitution the bill of rights you're not going to know who helen keller is 
well, right out of the gate, you're going to discount anything that is in the Constitution because you've already been brainwashed to believe that the people that created it are racist. Are racist haters. You shouldn't yeah. listen to anything they say. They wrote this country, made, created this country, wrote that document uh, mm -hmm. to empower them. Blah, 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 blah. So you're not even going to get to the point where you care what's in it. Anyway, it's a happy uh, Tuesday, right? Right, Pat? It's happy. Come on, Pat. It's happy. No, nah, I'm done. I can't say anything more. Okay. So anyway, we've said everything you can possibly you, let say. Me tell you what, let me tell you what will brighten your day. I'm out of words in okay. the English language. Here's what you do, okay? Mm. You okay. go to atthemikeshow.com mm. and you listen to uh, my podcast. But before you do that, you order Kexi cookies. See this? You got to go kexi.com. Right. K E K. I'm, try, I'm just. I'm trying everything here to, no, to bring him out of his funk. That's good. I mean, it's a long way to the well, but uh, mm -hmm. Kexi cookies. They're yummy. Mm -hmm. Who's your next uh, interview with? Since uh, you brought it up. Okay. Well, this uh, this week, uh, my very fun buddy. He's he's just hysterical. Uh, Tank Spencer, who's a sports guy in Asheville, North Carolina. Next week is when the Janice Dream uh, Janice Dean interview drops. Okay. Where she actually discusses. Mm -hmm. uh, she answers the question if she's running for governor or not. She does? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's not... I don't want to give not it all away. Not definitively. I will say this. You will want to listen to Janice Dean on March 5th on atthemikeshow.com because... Janice Dean of Fox News. Fox the News, person. yes, yeah. because yeah. that door is not closed. I will say that. Ah, huh, okay. And boy, if ever there's a vulnerable governor, it's Andrew Cuomo. He's in trouble Thanks right now. Thanks to her. She's the one. He's she's the pit bull that wouldn't let this go because her in-laws were effectively murdered by that man in his policies. All her in-laws died? Yes. Really sad. She wow. tells that story. Too. All right. Well, that's definitely going to be a good listen. All right. 888-900-3393. More Pat Gray Unleashed coming up. And welcome to it. 888-900-3393. Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Where Ad Cone tweets, wonder if all these young women wanting to repeal the Constitution realize the right for women to vote is in there. Yeah, but uh, the word freedom isn't, right? <laughs> the word woman does not appear Either is the word once woman. in the U.S. Constitution. Nor does the word freedom. Your, Your Honor. Honor. Dun, 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 dun. I love the fact <laughs> that that never happened in real life. I love it. And they put it in the movie to make it, I don't know, she was even more powerful than than she really was and in real life. it's not even accurate. Not even accurate. Because <laughs> the word freedom is... Buried. In the, well, yeah, buried in the First Amendment. Right there. Yeah, to go all the way to the first one, though. <laughs> you know how hard that can be? Uh, from baby, you can drive my cattle car to the town <laughs> <laughs> i got some cattle i'm driving to the t it's been a while since we've had that mm -hmm. uh i think to our children's children's children was a moody blues album oh uh, indeed it was yes absolutely it was uh 1969 to our children's children's children so how many albums did you say the moody blues have uh, uh a bunch I didn't. I don't think I set a specific number. There's two, uh, four, the one. six, eight, seven, eighty-nine. Eighty. The Moody Blues had eighty-nine albums. Eighty-nine, 89 albums. Eighty-nine albums. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness, that's give or take. <laughs> give or take. Give or take. Uh, proud Mr. Graybeard uh, tweets. Methinks Stevie Wonder is going to build a compound with huge walls around it in Ghana, and the millions of dollars he has. Won't be able to be taken as taxes on the rich. <laughs> uh, from Pew Pew One Pew. Excuse me. Did you guys just assume Helen is a female? Oh, wow. Sorry. We got caught right there. Point of personal privilege. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Please do not use gendered language to, mm -hmm. to address everyone. <laughs> or gendered names. Don't assume too much. Helen could easily be a man's name. Yeah, don't pigeonhole her. How many Helens do you know who are male? I mean, I, I don't even want to get into it, uh, but uh, you know the answer to that. Yeah, I can tell you, I know zero uh, Helens who are female. You don't know any no. female Helens? So so there might be something to, 
Might be a good point. That the, but you know of some, right? Helen Hunt. Sure, but I don't know them. The question Helen was, how Troy. many Helens do you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know that I personally know a Helen. Uh-huh. I know an Ellen, but not a Helen, but it is close. It's close. Yeah. Uh, Pat had sent uh, this piece of idiocy to us. Uh, Walmart notice. Walmart correction notice. Mm. Flyer ending January 27th. Grocery, page two. Page four, Supercenter. Oh, wow. That's confusing. So they have two different flyers, huh? Yeah, but they screwed up because they had the four four for $10 price shown in their flyer for old Dutch chips. I don't want That's old. incorrect. It's not four for 10. It's just two for five. <laughs> so they apologized uh, for any inconvenience because that's obviously stupid. So to correct. To, it's, it's not four for 10. It's two for five, you stupids. <laughs> Uh, we are done. Whoever wrote that flyer belongs in the same class with the. Uh, is it Helen Keller, the Nazi guy? <laughs> what are old? Fit right in. Uh, what, what were they advertising? <laughs> old Dutch chips. Old Dutch chips. Yeah. What is that? It's stale chips from uh, <laughs> right? the Netherlands. <laughs> then that's not a good bargain. <laughs> Two fifty a bag. It is not. They should be giving them away. Yeah. Yeah, we got some old. <laughs> <laughs> it's some stale, stale chips for you. All the way from uh, Holland. I would like to point out that Supercenter is also spelled wrong in their little correct. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. they spent it. They why, spelled why it they the British that? way. Why do they do that? Should I put that up again. Yeah, why do they do that? And theater does. It's a that? good point, Rob. Uh, yeah, they spelled it uh, Super Center, C E N T R E. Yeah, Super I think they, that's what they do in in Britain, right? So maybe yeah, this was a Canada. British Walmart. Yeah. I don't know. So no, oh, oh, yeah, okay. People. No, you're gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it's a British Walmart. No, it's the same people that don't realize that four for ten is the same as two for <laughs> two five. Right. I mean, that's worse than Keith. <laughs> that's true. They don't give them the benefit of the doubt. They don't know how to spell center. That's a really good point. Thank you. Thank you for bringing me back to reality. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Oh, we got to get to. The, I've been meaning to do this since last week. The school board, who were on a conference call. All the school board members, they thought it was a private little thing. We're just getting together on Zoom, and we're going we're gonna to badmouth the parents and maybe take care of some business. <laughs> and so they did. They got together on a Zoom call, and then they started talking about issues and things, and one thing led to another. You know, they forget that there's real people on the other side of those, those letters that they're writing. And by the way, they were writing letters about, hey, how about you let our kids come back to school? Yeah, they forget that people are on the other side of that. Um, School board members. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's these wonderful school board members who are working so hard for your kids. Yes, we're real community members. We have kids Mm -hmm. or have known kids that have gone to these schools. Right. Have an vested interest in this process, Mm -hmm. and they don't know what we do behind the scenes. And it's really unfortunate that they they want to pick on us. Yeah. They want their babysitters They're such victims. Oh, right. because they want their babysitters back. <laughs> oh, my God. How insulting is that? They only want their kids back in school so that they have their babysitter. Oh, I will tell you this. If you're a parent who works and or you're two parents who both work, which is probably uh, what is the case most of the time. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, that is part of the equation. You've got to have them back in school because what are you going to do with them? What are you doing with them the whole time? So, yeah, but they also want their kids educated. They want them back in school. They want them learning. They don't want them falling behind. And everybody's falling behind with this online thing. It just, it's not the same. And take the education out of it. Uh, These kids are home alone. Yeah. By themselves. Yeah, they need the interaction with their friends. They are losing their minds, and some kids, so many, are taking their lives, man. Yeah, it's horrible. It's really a horrible situation. Right. 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 They all agree, of course. I agree. And it's fine. It's just, it, I, I just need to get you know, up. You know, I, I, I totally hear that because... Uh, he totally hears it. My brother had a... Because I have delivery, ears. Yeah. My brother had a delivery service for mm-hmm. medical... Marijuana. Yeah. The clientele were parents with their kids in school. Okay. So now, not only do they want their babysitter back, but they also want to be home smoking dope while the kids aren't in school. Okay. So. 
Okay, well, now we're so getting somewhere. Now we're getting to the root of the matter. <laughs> These parents just want their kids in school so they can go back to smoking dope at home without the kids ratting on them. That's all. That's all they want. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Uh, it's great. Wait, 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 wait. wait. That's awesome. Wait. That's awesome. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So when you got when you got your kids at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. What? No more Friday. No more. Yeah, smoke dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that marijuana okay. joke is great. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, no. what happened? Laura Lanier, just FYI, you guys have the meeting. Oh, we have the meeting open to the public right now. Uh uh. Uh uh. Uh uh. Uh uh. Uh uh. I love it. We are in I, panic mode. I love it. Uh, oh, by the way, somebody just uh, messaged me. <laughs> we're, we're, the public is is watching us right now. Nuh-uh. Yeah, but they couldn't have recorded uh-huh. it or anything, right? I mean, there's no, no proof right. that we just badmouthed them for three It's not minutes. great. I love that. i got to hear that one okay. more. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Laura Lanier, just FYI, you guys have the meeting. Oh, we have the oh. meeting open to the public right now. Oh. <laughs> Nuh-uh. Nuh-uh. Uh-huh. That's what Lori just said. Great. And then the <laughs> panic ensues. And by the way, uh, over the weekend, they all resigned. <laughs> yeah. I love it. No more babysitters. No more babysitters. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that was more than the parents would want to take. I mean, to be disparaged like that mm-hmm. and to have that kind of attitude. Oh, we were just joking around. It was no big deal. Well, uh, yeah, the parents think it is a big deal if that's how you look at them. And their children, you look at them that way. Uh, that's not the kind of school board we need. So I think that's great that they were all, uh, they all just said bye-bye. And hopefully they'll get somebody in there who uh, takes the parents a little more seriously and maybe the whole educational process a little more seriously. Uh, 888 McDonald's said that uh, it will tie executive bonuses now to new goals for diversifying the company and for the first time publicly releasing demographic details of its workforce. Mm. Good. Finally. Mm -hmm. I've been wondering, okay, what's the demographic makeup of the employees at McDonald's? Because I'm not going to eat there if it's not exactly accurate. Uh, If it doesn't represent our society as a whole if it's not 73 percent white well, i don't care how many white I, unless it's if it's under 73 percent, i'll be okay with it but it better be a good percentage a, a higher percentage than actually exist of blacks hispanics <laughs> asians pacific islanders and native Americans. and this will affect your 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 food choices yes then. Yes, this will decide whether or not I eat Big Big Macs. Wow. Yeah. Ooh. Under the new rules, CEO Chris Kimzinski stands to lose 15% of his approximately $2,250,000 annual bonus. That's just his annual bonus. That is a good gig. Mm-hmm. Well, he's a CEO of McDonald's, I guess. I guess you'd expect that. You think they give him free fries? <laughs> Uh, I probably yes. I bet they're hot fries yeah. too. They don't have to give them the cold, stale ones. What I find is that millionaires get a lot of freebies, despite the fact that they that don't really need them. Yeah, yeah. What is that? And they get free dinners. They get free uh, stuff. They get free merchandise. I don't know why. You know uh, what? Yeah, they're the ones who can most afford it, and they get the most handouts. Okay, I'm pissed. I'm joining Antifa now. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> So, if he fails to meet goals to increase the portion of women and blacks, Hispanics, Asians, and other minorities in senior leadership, he could lose 15% of his uh, of his annual bonus. Mm. More organizations are seeking to increase opportunities for black workers, women, and other disenfranchised and underpaid groups after a nationwide reckoning with racism sparked by the May killing of George Floyd, a black man, by Minneapolis police. Just to remind you of those facts that I'm sure you wouldn't have remembered. As activists have called for more transparency, companies are increasingly reporting demographic data for their workforces and try and tying executive pay to diversification goals. Coffee seller Starbucks in October linked compensation to diversity goals 
but did not provide details of how those goals would be weighted in performance reviews. Nor should they have to, as far as I'm concerned. McDonald said in July that it would launch initiatives to increase diversity, but it had not yet developed exact mechanisms to do that. Apparently now they have. Mm, okay. So that's good, right? Because now you got companies that are making decisions based on solely on race. Yes. Or gender. Or gender. Or I'm sure sexual preference. That's a good way to run a company. It's it's probably the best way to run a company. So you're a CEO and you're like, I've got two candidates here in front of me. This individual I think is going to be great for the company, but he's not the right skin tone to get me to that percentage I need for my bonus. Do mm. you mm -hmm. short term hire the person that will get you your bonus or long term hire the person that will keep you in the role of CEO because you keep making great hires? This is stupid. And just wait. It's a matter of time. Within the decade, that's going to be federal policy. That's mm. going to be mm -hmm. a government policy right there. Would not surprise me at all. Long before a decade's over. Yeah, well, I was... I mean, look how fast this is terms. going. Yeah. We are speeding toward that cement wall at 100 miles an hour. It's really amazing. Uh, all right. Viral pictures of dogs with blue coats were taken 230 miles east of Moscow. So that's near a uh, chemical plant, which has been used unused since 2015. The dogs were seen near the factory, which produced plexiglass and hydrocyanic acid before it went bankrupt in 2015. Animal experts Look at that. are wondering if uh, copper sulfate, which was stored at the site, has caused dogs to turn various shades what of blue. What in the world, man? Look at that's like, kind of cool, though. It's kind of. I, I mean, as long as it's not hurting them. Sure. And they're saying that they're acting normal. They're healthy. They're just blue. And I don't mean. <laughs> that's a, a, really weird. Just a little tint. Uh, that is full blown. I'm a blue dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what won't turn your dog blue? What's that? Uh, but might increase their health. Uh, rough greens. It will give them that little uh, green beard. Okay. Uh, which is cool. And that would go really nicely with the blue, right. actually. So, it's not, so rough green is not going to turn your dog completely it will not, green like no. the weird blue dogs in Russia. No. <laughs> okay. But it will make them friskier and uh, and allow them to eat their dog food uh, a lot more passionately than they currently do <laughs> yeah. at least mine does uh, most dogs like mine love this stuff right off the bat i hear stories all the time about picky dogs even who literally just wolf this stuff down and absolutely love it when you sprinkle the rough greens on in fact my dog won't won't eat her food without it um because it's got all the nutrients that your dog needs the your dog doesn't get in the dry kibble food because it's all burned out of the food. It's sterilized, and so uh, all the nutrients are, are killed. Now, apparently, sometimes it can take your dog a little bit to get used to rough greens. So the first thing we want to find out is if your dog will eat it, if your dog's going to like it. You can get a free bag of rough greens to find out, uh, and you can try it out on your dog. All you do is pay for shipping. Just go to roughgreens.com. That's R U F F greens.com or call 833 Rough Dog. This was a scene outside uh, Ted Cruz's home. Somebody sent a mariachi band to perform for him outside his house. And they're demanding now his resignation. Why? Because he flew to Cancun overnight last week. He left Wednesday night, returned Thursday afternoon. Ah, uh, brother. I mean, it's so ridiculous. It's hard to believe. Again, just because he wasn't shivering in the cold here with the rest of us. Because he... His family was cold, and he said, you know what, then let's go someplace warm. How dare you? How dare you not suffer with the rest of us? No, we know there's nothing you could have done being a U.S. senator in a state where uh, there's nothing for you to do, really, during this crisis. 
except maybe call and ask for certain things to happen, apply a little bit of pressure, which he did, I think, before he left. But how dare you not be here shivering in the cold with no power? How dare you? Yeah, I mean... Stupidity. The Senate was on recess. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And and, and we've heard the whole, uh, hey, what does it matter what they do in their private life? Right? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. So Mm -hmm. what does it matter? It was his private time. What does it matter what he was doing? I'm telling you, the lesson of this is if you can afford it, take a private jet. Yeah, that way nobody no. would have known. Nobody would have known. They would nobody. You think his neighbors would have checked on him? No. As long as you're not posting right. online. Right. Here I am you know? on the beach. Here I am. Uh, my family and I are frolicking on the beach in Cancun. Man, it's beautiful here. I'm staying at the Ritz Carlton. Uh, sure wish you were here. <laughs> as long as you're not doing that, nobody would have even known, and this whole thing uh, wouldn't have happened. It's it's such nonsense that nonsense. we're always trying to put out these ridiculous fires that shouldn't have been sparked in the first place because no, there's nothing to it. Sure, and nobody's talking about how Joe Biden is a racist and how he questioned the intelligence of oh my blacks and Hispanics. That should right. be the big story right now. Right. That's a much bigger story than Ted Cruz went to Cancun when it was cold. <laughs> well, Boy. yeah. That's what people do in the winter. If they can, if they can get away and go someplace warm, that's what people do in the wintertime. The left looks for that distraction on the right that can take the heat off of their guy. Yep. And then they they just, all of them, in tandem, jump, and they, enter, they march in lockstep for that narrative. And that's what they got with Teddy. And the Biden thing. Where did we have that? Did we have that on video or was it on was yeah. it audio? The, uh, yeah. the other Here we go. Part, portion is a lot of people don't know how to register. Not everybody in the community, <laughs> in the Hispanic and the African American community, mm-hmm. particularly in, uh, in uh, rural areas rural that are distant areas. and okay. or and inner or city districts, inner city. know how to huh. use, know how to get online to determine <laughs> how to get in line for that COVID vaccination at the at the Walgreens. Okay, well, he just told you what he thinks of you as a minority. Yeah. He doesn't even think you can get online. You've got to be shown by some... Find find a kind-hearted white person. White person will help you. And they'll get you online, okay? And the- <laughs> if you can... I mean, they're hard to find because, I mean, white people just aren't kind-hearted. But if you do come across one who's willing to get near enough to show you how to get online... Do that. Do take advantage of that, that resource. Yeah. So somebody sent me. It's ironic <laughs> that you had the Ami Horowitz video today uh, at the college campus saying it's time. You know, students want to repeal the Constitution. Nothing in there for me. Ugh. Somebody sent mm. me an uh, old video from I don't know four or five years ago of Ami in a black neighborhood in New York City, and he's walking around asking them, "So do you have a driver's license?" Like, do you have a, a state ID? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. Uh, we're told that it's hard for you to get one. <laughs> and he's like, you know, because you know, that, that's the stupid argument. Like, oh, well, we, we need to, you know, they can't get an ID. They don't right. know where so to go. Right, so you can't ask them at the voting right. booth. Right, and he's asking all of these people, all these black people, so where's the DMV? Oh, it's down here on 25th. Hey, where's the DMV? Uh, you go down three blocks on 25th. I mean, it's just, it's, it, mm. It's a madhouse. It's, it's a madhouse. Yeah, a madhouse. A madhouse. But the left is constantly questioning the intelligence or capabilities Always. of minorities. Always. How? I, so insulting. So insulting. So racist. So racist. <laughs> I'm angry. Uh, I know, me too. I'm frustrated. <laughs> and I'm about to pass a kidney stone. Yeah. Oh, are you? Yeah. Uh, that's right. You were at the emergency room what time this morning? Uh, what time? Uh, one something to three something. Really? And then I just, just said, sitting there in pain. Yeah. And watching people vomit near me and uh, uh, people moaning in pain. I was like, I'm not getting it. I'm going to work. When I had the kidney stone, was that last year or year before? Uh, I don't know. It was. I had two of them, in fact, and it blocked both my kidneys. 
Uh, that's that was the first time I'd thrown up in 35 years. Oh wow! 35 Good years for you. Yeah, that's how bad the pain was. This would be my fourth. So kidney I'm kind of surprised stone. you're sitting right there. Yeah, me too. About to pass a kidney I'm stone. I'm trying to that's come crazy. up with a name for it. Once I give birth, I'm gonna. Uh, hell, it's uh, hell on earth. Yeah. Oof, that's a pain I don't ever want to experience again. Pat Gray. Uh, just three weeks after the Weather Channel told us to expect a much above average. <laughs> Warm February. Uh, we had our snowpocalypse last week. <laughs> yeah, expect a much above average. It's going to be a warm winter. I, you know, it's the global warming. And uh, <laughs> on top of global warming, we're, we're experiencing El Nino. And so those two factors, you're just going to way above average uh, warm winter. So Three weeks to the day when they publish this. Yeah, snowpocalypse. <laughs> Five below zero at Keith's house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just north of Dallas, Texas. I mean, that, yeah, okay. You got to be trying to suck that bad. Am I right? Seems like it, yeah. I, I mean, there are forecasts mm-hmm. that go out that far. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, but, but yet, let's... Let's trust these people. Yes. Who are warning us. Right. What do we expect 100 years from Follow now? Follow the science. Completely destroy our economy in the process so yeah. that we can fix their magical futuristic pr- predictions right. that they can't get right three weeks out. They kind of are magical, aren't they? Uh, John Kerry warning that the United States has... He's still doing this. Oh, my God. I can't... He's still doing this. And this is just a disproven, bald face lie. It has been debunked by every serious person, even global warming scientists who are all over the global warming and believe that it's bad and believe that it's catastrophic. None of them are actually saying we only have nine years to avoid disaster. None of them are. The IPCC isn't saying it. Nobody is saying it. And who is the scientist that we talked to a while ago? He wrote that book, uh, Apocalypse Greg- Never. Are you I talking about Gregory Wrightstone? No, no, okay. no, it wasn't Wrightstone. It's, it the, was it's the believer, the big global warming guy. He's been like oh. an environmentalist for 30 Michael years. Michael Schellenberger. Yes, Michael Schellenberger. Okay. Went to each of the agencies that supposedly said these things and actually asked them to clarify. And in every case, they said, no, we, we didn't say that. <laughs> we didn't say that. I mean, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So John Kerry is still pushing the lie that we're nine years away. He was. These were remarks at the Munich Security Conference. Mm. He noted that a group of scientists, a group of scientists told us three years ago that we had 12 years. No, they didn't! No! Stop lying about it. It's despicable. It's absolutely despicable. Around 2030 is the date at which we have to get the world now on the right path in order to cap the level of warming at the level of one and a half degrees. Wait, now they're trying to cap our warming? Yeah. Did you see what happened to us last week? (laughs) I know. Wait, I got down to five below. What's good at... I would have taken one and a half degrees warmer. Right? I t- <laughs> Come on. When it was one, I would have taken two and a half. I would have, s- yes, give me two and a half degrees right now. <laughs> this but is one of those, happen. if we didn't take over the economy in 2008 and do what we did. Yeah. Oh, right. my goodness. It would have right. made the, the Great Depression look like a walk in the park. And when this doesn't happen in 2030, that's what they'll be saying. Yeah. yeah fortunately, we took the steps we needed to take. You did what? What were the steps? So he's referring to a supposed 2018 UN report, which warned that global emissions needed to decrease by 45% in order to avoid a one and a half degrees of global warming. But they're not saying anything catastrophic by that. They're not saying the world's going to end. They're not saying we're going to starve to death. They're not going to, they're not saying the planet's going to split in half because it's so hot. None of that stuff is happening. We all need to develop not just a number, but a roadmap for how we'll actually make the dramatic progress we need to make over the next 10 years. (laughs) And what we will specifically do to get to net zero 
by no later than 2050. I just these people are obsessed. I, can't, I, I just really it's hard to take. It, I, I can't take it. It's a religion, man. Oh, absolutely. It is their religion. Absolutely. And if you dare challenge their creed, their doctrine, their holy scripture. Yes. That is the Green New Deal. Yep. And 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 Saint AOC and, and yes. all of the 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 figureheads and of all the them, priests and the priestesses priest, yeah. Yeah. of this movement, you know, and John Kerry's one of them. Where's Al Gore? He's been? one of the worst. I don't know. Right? I don't know. You know, he's just here's huh. where, here's where Al Gore is. Al Gore made his millions and selling. Yeah, and he's out. He's he's like <laughs> fight the good fight. I'm I'm busy. Uh, I, I made I made my money on my Ethu talk <laughs> and so I'm just living here in Malibu <laughs> on the ocean. <laughs> the questions were too hard. <laughs> so, so I'm chilling. Uh, I'm just uh I'm having my second chakra rubbed right now. Boy, he's got millions of spend on chakra <laughs> rubs too. Yeah, he does. Hundreds of millions. What did he make on on the uh on the UAE was it UAE? Uh, yeah. No, it was. Yeah, it was United Saudi Arabia. Arabia. Somebody bought his. Uh, yes. Stupid network. What was this network? Qatar called? or UAE? One of the big oil. And you remember, countries. the left got mad at him. They're like, "Whoa, why are you selling to an oil rich nation that pollutes the?" Because right. I'm really a capitalist. Okay. Bye bye. I'm checking out now, and I'm gonna go and burn lights all night at my yep. Tennessee estate. What a good buy his channel turned out to be, too, right? I mean, you hear about it all the time. Whatever happened Wait, to the Al Gore network what thing? Was that, uh, it was called, uh, I can't even remember what current. it was called. Current, yes. So current became what? Fossil fuels TV? I, something. Current. Wasn't it Al Jazeera? Al Jazeera, yes, thank It you. became Al Jazeera. Oh, I forget that. And Al Jazeera is out of business in the United States. That was and you a know good who doesn't for care? Him. He doesn't care about Al Jazeera, doesn't care about current TV's message or what happens to the planet. It's Al Gore. Right. Because all he's doing is sitting by the pool, yep. sip. He's got his own personal chakra releaser who comes over every morning at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. And he's that's how he's spending his money. And he's laughing at everybody that buys this crap. That was a $500 million deal, if you remember uh, correctly. And I think he made like $200 million out of it that's i mean a, the guy is a climate billionaire that's a lot of chakra getting released right sure there. sure is oh my goodness he's it, just a flat-out climate billionaire and i don't and he's so he's made his he's yeah. out yeah he doesn't seem to even care anymore does I mean, he you know, if he if he truly believed this especially now that they have all the branches of government at their disposal and they've got this Green New Deal sitting right there. If he really believed in this message, mm -hmm. in this in this uh, uh, creed of his, he would be the f spokesman right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. They're all a bunch of hypocrites. Uh, there's not a one of them who really believe what they say. Because otherwise, John Kerry wouldn't be taking private jets wherever he goes. Because he'd know better. He'd know... He's ruining this planet, and he's killing us by doing it. So it's just, it, it's impossible to take him seriously. Just incredible. It's incredible. Uh, Pat Head Tea Party Trucking sent this to us. Uh, here's a fun map. <laughs> Best and worst places for natural disasters. <laughs> the worst city in the nation for natural disasters. <laughs> Drum roll, please. <laughs> Dallas, Texas. <laughs> Dallas, Plano, Irving. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Busted. Good. Wow, we're the worst place for natural right. disasters? And right. How? I don't... How is that possible? I don't know. Is that I mean, okay, tornadoes? We, tornadoes. Yeah, we're in Tornado Alley. Uh, and this is before the ice storm. We're never giving up the hold of number one now. You know, flooding? Uh, we don't I, have earthquakes I thought to speak this was of. surprising, too. What, what are we... Is it the... I mean, How these are possible? natural disasters, right? Yeah, so yeah. So this isn't like the bad drivers, Keith, right, around here. Listen to this. Okay, so I would think Houston is way above Dallas because of the hurricane problem. That's true. Dallas, Plano, Irving is number one. Number two, uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas. What? Again, I, I, I guess that's right? tornadoes? I don't know. What? 
Corpus Christi. Now, you got hurricanes there. And Houston. Both make sense at three and four. Well, Houston is a disaster. But... Yeah. Uh, so is Beaumont. And <laughs> so those are three, four, and five. Then you got Shreveport, Louisiana. Austin, Texas. What happens in Austin? It's weird. I know that. And then Birmingham, Alabama. They're all in the south for, for disasters. That's weird. Uh, really weird. It's not like earthquakes are happening in Birmingham. No. And here's the metro areas with, at the lowest risk in the country for disasters. Corvallis, Oregon. Mount Vernon, Washington. Mm-hmm. Bellingham, Washington. Uh, Wenatchen, Wach- uh, Wash- yeah, Washington. Okay. Then you've got Grand Junction, Colorado. Spokane, Washington. Salem, Oregon. And Seattle, Washington. Uh, <laughs> I guess Washington State is pretty darn safe. Okay, but then you got nothing deal can with happen your there. Ridiculous government. Yes, there. yes, right. So, which is an unnatural disaster. Enjoy that trade-off. I can't think of what. Yeah, that's makes Dallas so high risk, except for tornadoes, and we haven't had significant ones that since we've been here, really, have yeah, we? No. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yes, Maybe we one. We had one that actually hit in Dallas. Remember that? Yeah, kind of. About a year or two. Uh, eh. Been a couple. I can think of a few. Mm-hmm. 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 There's been many tornadoes. <laughs> have there must be that. It must be just the tornadoes. We did have some earthquakes. You know, just small tremors. Like those were fun. Those were three, fun tornado uh, earthquakes. Three point five on the Richter scale. Yeah, it's fun then. That's one of those where you can be like, yeah, I survived an earthquake. Come as, on. As long as nothing falls on your head, right? And you still have the roof over it, uh, oh. then you're okay. Then they're kind of fun. You know, I got to thinking, as you said that, when I experienced those earthquakes here in Irving, Texas, that was before this room, because this used to be where I sat, that was before there were lights hanging from the ceiling in here. Oh, yeah. And now that you say it like that. Yeah, I was in the big studio. Yeah. uh, 3.30 or 4 one morning when it just started rumbling and shaking. And I thought, wow, this is not a good place to be with like 300 lights above my head when and Jeffy they're big heavy ones yeah yeah jeffy got here early today <laughs> that's what i thought immediately right jeffy's already here he's dang someone else much sleep. later than this uh-huh <laughs> no but, that but it turned out to be a 3.5 earthquake and which was, are easily huh. confused yes between the two experiences <laughs> right between jeffy arriving at a 3.5 richter scale earthquake it's funnier when he's here <laughs> to say that now well, I'll we'll have to repeat it tomorrow. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that for sure. Yeah. For sure. All right. 888-933-93. <laughs> uh, I love this. What? Uh, because uh, scientists are now suggesting that we eat human flesh to fight climate change. That's interesting because it was about 15 years ago when Ted Turner said climate change is so bad that we'll turn to cannibals in the future. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. So cannibalism was a bad thing then, but now it's a good thing that prevents what exactly uh, Ted Turner was warning about. Maybe just the far left just has this weird you, fetish for eating, eating human yeah, flesh. Yeah, for cannibalism. They're going to get there one way or the other. Well, they're the culture of death. They've, they've got a weird thing for all forms of death. A Swedish scientist speaking at a Stockholm summit last week offered an unusual possible tactic in combating climate change, and that's eating human flesh. <laughs> Some of the talking points at the seminar included whether humans were too selfish to live sustainably and if cannibalism is the solution to food sustainability in the future. When asked during an interview after his talk if he personally would try human flesh, he said he's open to the idea. Yeah, I'm open to it, sure. You know what? I'm not. So I'm just going to rule it out right now. Don't even ask me. I'm not going to do it. So again, I'd like to revisit the weather last Mm -hmm. week. In Dallas, Texas, Mm -hmm. where it got to five below zero. So the trade-off is we eat human beings or we risk not falling to five degrees below zero? (laughs) Okay, warm it up then. Mm -hmm. If that means I don't have to eat humans. Mm -hmm. Did you ever... You've been doing talk radio for a long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, Did you ever at any point imagine yourself sitting in the host chair like this reading the stories playing the videos the headlines of what we're living through right now 
No. And you think to yourself, you don't want to no. risk it, but you think, it can't get any weirder than this. I mean, do you remember the main concerns in 2001 when we were doing this 20 years ago in Houston? Uh, the main concerns were, well, terrorism, mm-hmm. which was pretty big. But it was something we were all together on. So it felt different. It felt like, okay, we're united in this. We're, we've got a common enemy and we have a common goal to stop that stuff. But we have disintegrated to the point where uh, it's just total lunacy now. Just total lunacy. And we're not together by any stretch of the imagination. On anything. On we, anything. We're speaking completely different languages. Yeah. To the point where you got people talking about cannibalism as a solution to climate change. I mean, it's just it's right? asinine. You've got be less white and you've got, uh, 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 you can be a vegan, yeah. but if you aren't against colonialism, what the? What are you talking about? Don't forget imperialism. Colonialism and imperialism. So being vegan is not enough. You have to combine that with some sort of extremist weird thing that's not even really happening anymore. I mean, when when was the last time anybody was doing anything colonial? Uh, is that even going? Is that a thing still? Who's colonizing I, anymore? I don't think anybody's colonized Whoa. anywhere since the early 1800s. <laughs> when was the last time well, somebody took a colony for themselves? <laughs> Everybody's been given back the colonies. That's what's been happening over the last hundred years. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to think here. You know, it's kind of suspect the way, uh, the way the Spanish American War happened. But since mm-hmm. then, you know, we've been pretty respectable of boundaries, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every time we fight a war, we just leave. Well, that's yet to happen completely in okay. Iraq and Afghanistan, but it's okay, still right, kind right, of right, continuing. Right. Okay, so then. <laughs> well, in Korea and Germany. But other than that, yeah, right, 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 and Japan. Right, right. But okay. other than okay. those right. few examples. Very, very, very. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not you can't call that colonialism because no. we're not we're not their government. We allow them self rule, even though we have troops there. <laughs> we allow them self rule, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, frankly, who else does that? Nobody. Mm-mm. Nobody. Uh, who was it that said the, the only the only territory we ask after we save your ass <laughs> is just enough uh, room to bury our dead. Uh, who was it that said that after World War II? I mean, it's so true. Uh, trip, 888-900-3393. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. By the way, speaking of the global warming that we had here last week, where it got down to five below <laughs> in certain parts of Texas, uh, the damages tied to the life-threatening crisis caused by that storm looks like it's going to cost about $50 billion. Wow. I mean, that would be one of the most expensive storms of like all I time. Said, we're going to hang on to that number one spot, aren't we? Yep. Looks like. Uh, the estimate provided earlier this week by AccuWeather CEO Joel Myers <clears throat> accounts for lost wages, damages to businesses and homes, and cleanup across the region. Uh, meteorologist Jonathan Porter said that the estimate denotes the historic magnitude and just how much of a life-threatening crisis this has been for people in the Southern Plains, the Southeast, and especially Texas. It, it's yet another setback for businesses that mm-hmm. don't need it in a very challenging year. Boy, that's for sure. Uh, 888-900-3393. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Let me tell you about Bilt Bar. Uh, if you enjoy a snack between meals... You get hungry at work, um, or you just want to eat better. Built Bar is such a great way to go because every one of these Built Bars has only 110 to 160 calories, but they have 16 to 20 grams of protein, and they're delicious. You're going to love the taste. Mm -hmm. They're just like a candy bar. There's not a bad Built Bar. Really isn't. (laughs) I've not had one. And they don't have that chemical aftertaste. I don't know how they do it with so few calories because usually they do it through... The chemical process. And then after you're done eating it, you're like, uh, did I just eat sulfur dioxide? What, what, what <laughs> it's I have so here? true, man. I uh, mean, I, I won't say the names, <laughs> but I've had bars where I'm just like, yes. oh, man, I can just taste like the machinery used to make this. Yes. 
Built Bar, not that way. Not the case at all. And it comes in, I don't know, 14,000 flavors, I yeah, think it's it is. It's actually 18. Four, okay. Or 18. <laughs> and they're all covered in 100% chocolate. <laughs> Fantastic. So Built Bar is the answer. Whether you're just hungry during the day and this will curb your appetite until you get home and can eat a little bit better than you can at work or you're just trying to eat healthier, this is a great way to go. BuiltBar.com. Use a promo code PAT20 and you'll get 20% off your next order. Use the promo code PAT20 for 20% off at BuiltBar.com. It's Pat Gray unleashed on the blade. So Pat, I, I was just reminded as we were thinking, we're going down memory lane thinking about uh, recent tornadoes that have hit Dallas. Uh, yeah. yeah. Jeffy just sent me a note uh, to remind us that one actually hit his house. We oh, that's right. To it this, was sorry. like a category zero or something. <laughs> oh, but right. yeah, one did hit his he house. He tore off his roof, man. Yeah. It was like a it was a like a stiff wind. No, come on. <laughs> it was a it was a roof remover. It did remove his roof. That's Which, right. By the way, I was at his right. uh, other place that he had to move to after a year long battle with a mm-hmm. with his know, landlord. landlord that you know but there's not a roof. Do you not see this? So he's at a nice place now that actually has a roof. I saw that for myself yesterday. Wow, good for so, him. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy for him. He's got a roof now. I can uh, congratulations. I can confirm. Jeffy. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's great. So anyhow, yeah. yeah so we completely forgot about, forgot about what was that? A year? Two years? It's got to be two years ago. Uh, three. three? It was. It was a year and a half ago. Remember, because it was. Okay. Uh, it was a holiday. It was either Father's Day or I think it was Father's Day. It was in June of. He'll he'll be sending you a little note. Yeah. First of all. Yeah. We're we're a first of all. Wait for the delay here, and then. Uh, See now you're doing that, and and out of spite, he's not gonna tell me. (laughs) First of all. I'm gonna go with June 2019. (laughs) That's my, that's my guess. Okay. Well, yeah, that's yeah, that's a long time ago. Yeah. Frankly. Mm -hmm. 2019. I mean, how old were you in 2019? I don't even remember. Good old days when tornadoes were. I think I was just getting out of high school in 2019. You think you were? I think so, yeah. You think so? I think, if I remember right. Yeah. So. I may not remember that exactly right. You were class of 19? <laughs> 19. Yeah. Wow. You're a young buck. Yeah. As no, still... I, I rose through the ranks quickly. You sure did. Yeah. My word. I'm waiting so. for Jeffy to respond. And like First said, of all. I don't think he's. First of all. Tell me now. <laughs> uh, I love this story. Um, the Mars rover. Did you see that they're recording sounds now from yes, Mars? Yes, 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 yes. It's so you can cool. actually hear yes. what Mars sounds like. Cool. Okay, now you got to listen carefully because okay. it was recorded really low. Oh, wow. And I had to turn it way up. Oh, no. Uh, but here's the first sounds ever recorded on the Martian surface. Whoa. Sounds like a scream. You heard that too? Uh, yeah. Uh oh. Right. Hmm. What? Not sure what's going on there. This. <laughs> huh. Wow. Just so, you know what that sounds like is Arnold and his girlfriend still struggling to breathe there after they got sucked out onto the Martian surface. <laughs> and now the Martian <laughs> rover picked it up. Huh. Only. On the Blaze Radio Network.